Hi, I want to show you some applications of image-based high-throughput phenotypic profiling or short HTPP for hazard evaluation of environmental chemicals. My name is Joanna Niffler and I am an ORISE postdoctoral fellow at the Center for Computational Toxicology and Exposure at the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. I want to stress that the views expressed in these presentations are mine and not necessarily represent the views or policies of the agency. My poster is looking like this. It consists of three parts. Um, I start on the left side with some background methods and some overall results. And then I want to focus on two particular applications of how we want to use phenotypic profiling at the agency. What is phenotypic profiling? So phenotypic profiling is an imaging-based method that can be used for chemical screening. It works by labeling cells with a mix of different fluorophores and then taking pictures on a fluorescent microscope. We then quantify um, the phenotype of the cells by measuring the shape, intensity, localization, texture, or other features of individual cells. And in our version of the assay, um, we obtain 1,300 features for each individual cell. The good thing about this method is that it doesn't require any a priori knowledge of molecular targets, and we hope that this method could be used as an efficient and cost-effective method to evaluate chemical bioactivity. So we work fully in vitro, currently with U2 as osteosarcoma cells, and we play the cells and then dispense chemicals. We have the chemicals, the cells exposed to the chemicals for 24 hours, and then we fix the cells, stain them, and image them to obtain these beautiful images. So we get, as I've mentioned before, um, 1,300 features, and we get a value for each of these features for each cell. So we have then to do a, a several steps of um, data analysis and data reduction um, to boil that down to only one value for each feature for each well. Um, that leaves us with what we call a profile, which is a 1300 dimensional vector for each well. And we can compare that to the profile of other chemicals. Or we can do concentration response modeling and actually come up with a potency estimate for a certain chemical, a potency estimate for when we see bioactivity happening. And this is what I'm going to show you in application one. Here are some visual examples of how such phenotypes can look like. Um, sometimes they're quite striking, but they can also be very subtle. For example, here, um, it should be quite obvious that the cell in the right picture are much larger than the cells in the left picture. To date, we have um, run two screens, and I'm showing you the results of these two screens in the two different applications um, that I'm going to introduce you now. So the first application is the goal to use phenotypic profiling to estimate thresholds for chemical bioactivity. So we want to find a potency at which we see the chemical being active in our cellular system. And most of this work has been published earlier this year. So because we work in vitro, our potency estimate that we get out is in micromolar. But um, exposure estimates or traditional in vivo data are reported in milligrams per kilogram body weight per day. And so we have to convert our micromolar um, concentration to an applied dose. And that's what we do using in vitro to in vivo extrapolation. Once we did that, we can then compare our values to these other data streams. So here we compared the potency estimates that we obtained from HTPP directly to values that, are, that we have available from in vivo studies. And we wanted to see if running our in vitro assay and deriving a potency from that would give us a similar value than the one from the in vivo study. 
And that's what is shown in this graph here with uh, zero being the unity line. So a chemical would behave exactly, would have the same potency in vivo as in vitro. And the purple curve is the one for HTPP. And we can see that it is closer to the unity line than the other two alternative assays. Another way to compare the data is to look at um, estimated exposures. And this is of interest because the agency want to focus more on chemicals um, at which we see bioactivity at levels that humans are exposed to. And this is represented in this graph here. So while a lot of chemicals um, are only active at way higher concentrations than what we are exposed to, um, there is a subset of chemicals for which there is exposure at concentrations that um, can be bioactive. So the overall conclusion is that, yes, HTPP in vitro potencies can actually be used um, to compi com compile a bioactivity exposure ratio and to prioritize chemicals based on the inferred bioactivity in relation to predicted human exposure. The next step is that we want to test chemicals in multiple cell types to increase biological coverage. The second application is not looking at potencies, but it's looking at the qualitative differences between profiles. So we hope that we can use the phenotypic profiles to group chemicals that have a similar mode of action. So here I show how I calculate that. So basically I have this vector with 1300 features. And what I do is basically I do a Pearson correlation to the vector of another chemical. So here is an example of drug-like chemicals that we grouped. So here is a set of glucocorticoid receptor agonists. And we can see that some of them have a similar profile and some of the chemicals are looking different. But um, when you look closer at the data that is available, uh, we actually found out that these chemicals and um, their primary target is the progesterone receptor and not the glucocorticoid receptor. And it seems that our assay was able to distinguish between the two. We also have evidence that such grouping works also for environmental chemicals. And this is an example of organochlorines. Um, here are the five chemicals. They have a similar profile to each other. And we can also show that the chemicals are also structurally similar to each other. So overall, this is promising. And it shows that the preliminary results are promising, indicating that HTPP is able to discern putative mode of actions of drug-like and environmental chemicals. Now, this needs a little bit more work. Um, we definitely want to look at different molecular targets. In particular, we are interested in targets that are not already covered by other assay streams. Here I just have the references if you want to have, I want to look more into detail. And if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me.